A pretext is a purpose or a motive alleged or an appearance assumed in order to cloak the real intention or state of affairs. Initial access. Omai is trying to get into your network. Listen, this is your manager and I'm trying to send off an email. I got this document. Need you to confirm a few details. So go ahead and log in and tell me what you think. I need this now, so to make this convenient, here is the link. I'm a threat actor, fishing mark the email, it's urgent to distract you with it. So how fast do you click it when you submitted the form with your password in it? You probably couldn't tell there was an actual difference in the URL, the domains look alike though. And to you, it looks fine though, but mine had typos to make it look like yours. See, I was in the mood today to make your account a communal space. But then you activated your trap card, and I saw you had to a fake. But I just shrugged, I'ma shake it off. I'ma take them off, got your phone number I'ma make a call, I'ma break this wall It just makes me low I'm moving quick I'm on a mission, mission, mission Yeah, I heard your network is lit I'm trying to get in, get in, get in Yeah, I'm trying to get me a hit When I go fishing, fishing, fishing Yeah, you probably think it's legit I got you clicking, 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 clicking Yeah, hello, hello, hi Hi, I'm calling you from the IT department We have been under attack by some hackers And we think that your account might be a target From your authenticator rap, so please pass me them digits. One sec. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The code is one one two three four five. Thank you. You fell for the lie, so I hung up the phone without saying goodbye. Ow. Cutting it short like a crew cut. Probably think it won't happen to you, but it happened to Uber. They say you win some, you lose some. Boys got a smooth touch, hacking you too, bro. You know how I be creeping, and I'm logging in your VPN. It probably looks anomalous. I'm logged if you be keeping them. I'm probably unaware about the shares that have been peeping, and the reason I'll be seeking them. I'm looking for an easy win. You probably thought it was a magic trick and your mad you clicks I'm a stack by chips and bet that a DA password is sitting in an admin script I'm moving quick I'm on a mission, mission, mission Yeah, I heard your network is lit I'm trying to get in, get in, get in Yeah, I'm trying to get me a hit When I go fishing, fishing, fishing Yeah, you probably think it's legit I got you clicking, 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 clicking I'm moving quick I'm on a mission, mission, mission Yeah, I heard your network is lit Hello, 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 everyone. How are you doing? Thanks very much for joining us today again. So I have with me the man, the myth, the legend himself, uh, Mr. Ibrahima. How are you doing also? <laughs> are you able to hear me? Just, just make sure that <laughs> hello, David. <laughs> yeah, hello. Yes, hi. I'm fine. Anyway. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot. Yeah, doing good. Thanks, doing good. So there's a lot of people that have been asking in the chat window. We've got like... Number one question. So number one, like, thank you for joining the uh, uh, doctor. Thank you for joining Sebas Vasquez. Thanks for joining. I can see Sarkovi. I can see we have Daniel. So a lot of questions about what's the name of the song. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of people really found this song very interesting. So so do you, do you want to, you want to take that side, but do you want to take like what's, what's the song that we've been playing? <laughs> I just... Uh, exactly the name of the song <laughs> yeah so the song itself is it's called clicking so i have like the title on the screen so it's called clicking by omi so omi was actually like in our community so um he spoke in, in our group i think like maybe about three four weeks ago so he spoke so if you're yet to check out on the community channel you can check out like the full video so um but also it's like a nerdcore artist so um i've put the link to the music in the chat window on YouTube, but it's also on SoundCloud. So if you just search for clicking by OMI on SoundCloud, um, you'll be able to find the music there. So again, it, it does like really, really good music and I encourage everyone to check it out. <laughs> okay. So before going ahead, just some quick information. We, we already have our speaker waiting backstage. And again, as mentioned, this is one of the most registered, you know, meetups that we've had in quite a while. So, so really appreciate everyone turning up. So if you're yet to join the community group, I'm putting the link in the chat window. Make sure 
Hey, I can see we have Byron online. Hello, Byron. How are you doing? Thanks very much. So if I might, you may not know, but just I throw this in. So but Byron was one of his, actually it's not was, he's still like one of the mentors that I have. So it was one of the people that brought me up in cloud security. So when I was working at the cloud security company based out of Oxford then. So Byron, good to have you online. Thanks very much for joining us. Really appreciate you turning, <laughs> turning up. <laughs> okay. So awesome. if you're yet to join the community page, make sure you join the community. So I've put the link in the chat window. So that way you will be kept up to, up to date with events that we have coming up. So we have Kevin speaking to us today, but we have Carl that will be speaking to us on the 18th also. So, you know, you'll be, you'll be speaking on some vulnerability research that he did. So make sure you join uh, and with that. So with that being said, let's bring on, on to this main stage now, Mr. Kevin. Kevin, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, David. How are you? Yeah, doing good. Thanks. Doing good. Thanks very much for joining us. So just Thanks. to like give you like background information of how I knew. So I think Andy Robbins, who, who created like uh, Blood, Blood Hound, right? So he yeah. spoke for our community, for Ibrahim and myself in our community, he spoke for us like last year. And then I, you know, I, I follow Andy on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Then Andy put out like a blog post on yeah. someone who did an amazing work, really highlighting like ways to use you know, the amazing tool of Blood Hound or Azure Hound to identify attack paths. And that was how I got to know you to begin with. And mm -hmm. I come to think about it, I'm working with like Joylin. Um, yeah, who yeah. I'm sure you know, I'm working with Joylin on a project <laughs> in the back end. And I was like, Joylin, okay. do you know this guy called Kevin who has like amazing work? And Joylin is like, I know Kevin very well. So it's a very small <laughs> world, right? The cloud security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So good to have you on. So thank you. Yeah, no problems. So I will just go ahead and just um, hand over to you to introduce yourself, introduce what you're going to be speaking about. And if people have questions, feel free to put your questions in the chat window and we'll pass them on to Kevin at the end and Kevin will address the questions. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you so much, David, uh, for the wonderful introduction. I understand that uh, we were supposed to have this uh, presentation last week, but then something came up uh, what we call unforeseen circumstances. So I do apologize for that. I also like to appreciate the time and effort that you have put into making this happen. And I uh, think I'm ready to start. So uh, my name is uh, Kevin John Manjuma. I am a security researcher. I like uh, doing research about uh, cloud technologies, specifically Azure. And I like to play around with uh, some of its uh, components, uh, specifically the identity and uh, access management platform, and basically get to know how uh, it's inner working, how the components interact. And on that note also, I like uh, uh, expanding on other people's research reading so that I can solidify my understanding on this uh, technological concepts. So uh, you can find me on the blog under the handle softblocks uh, at github.io. Also on other social media platforms, you can find me under the handle at softblocks. So we start off by looking at today's agenda. Uh, we'll be talking about what mapping is, uh, the tools that are used for mapping, and how we can collect data in our tenant environment and then feed into these tools, and then also analyze the data and also try to identify the attack paths. And we'll finish off by a, a proof of concept. So mapping. Uh, mapping is basically an activity or a process of creating a picture or a diagram that represents something. You could have a mapping of your house. You could have a mapping of even the human body. But uh, today, in this regard, we're di discussing about mapping the Azure environment and getting to know uh, the different objects that are in the environment. We understand that uh, Azure is a very complex system that is made up of different objects uh, like users, applications, 
service principles and devices. And so we will be talking specifically in regards to do with uh, the identity and access management platform that is Azure AD and you get to see how these uh, objects uh, relate to one another. Uh, speaking of the tools that we're going to use so that we can map up the, our environment, uh, these tools are uh, Bloodhound and Azure Hound. And um, these tools are built up by SpecTops and specifically I'd like to shout out to uh, my guy called Andy Robbins, who is also the co-creator of these tools. And uh, we start off by Bloodhound, which is a graph theory to reveal the hidden and often intended relationship within Active Directory and also Azure environment. Later on in this presentation, we'll come to understand what we mean by hidden and the unintended relationships. So Azure Hound, on the other hand, is basically a tool that is used to collect uh, the data from uh, Azure Tenant, and then you feed this data into Bloodhound. Now, uh, speaking of installing these uh, tools, start off by Bloodhound. These are the commands that you'll be running. Now, uh, these instructions are specifically for Kali Linux. Uh, for those of you who have other Linux distribution, you can click on the link below or rather go to Bloodhound official website and you'll see the instructions of installing uh, the Bloodhound. So basically these are the, the commands that you'll be running on your Kali Linux machine. And then after installing the Bloodhound, you'll start by uh, this application called Neo4j which is basically a console for uh, mapping these uh, graphical visuals of Bloodhound. Then you'll start uh, on the local host, uh, the address that is given here, and then you will be asked for credentials. The default credentials are normally Neo4j, but then if you, that is the username and the password. Once you put them, uh, you will be asked to change the passwords. Then um, after you change the password, you will launch uh, the Bloodhound now. So launching the Bloodhound, you'll be faced by an interface looking like this. This is where you enter your username, the one that you have created new, the new one, and also the password. Okay. Uh, uh, when it comes to installing Azure Hound, uh, there's this URL that is in the GitHub. So you just have to clone, clone it, sorry, in your machine. And then after you clone it, uh, you want to CD into that directory and run the uh, application that is called Azure Hound. So in other words, Azure Hound, sorry. Now, talking about a collection of data. Uh, Azure Hound uses a couple of authentication flow. You can use the username and password combo. You can use the JWT, what we call Java uh, web tokens. You can also use surface, surface principal secrets. You can also use refresh tokens. Because uh, why we need this authentication flow is because to get the data in your tenant, you'll have to authenticate in your Azure tenant. But in our case, we'll be using refresh tokens because uh, with these other authentication flows, uh, you may experience issues because they might have uh, things like MFA and other restrictions. Now, uh, we start off by generating a refresh token and uh, there will be a PowerShell script that we're going to, to use, they are going to use to perform what we call Azure AD device code uh, flow and generate uh, refresh tokens. Uh, normally, we know that uh, if you're building an application that is going to interact a lot with um, Azure AD, and we, we know that it will require a web browser, which is in our case, we'll be using a console. So that is why we'll be, it's, it is recommended to use Azure AD device code flow. 
uh, this is the code that will be running. Uh, it's a PowerShell script. Client ID is basically the ID of the application that we're going to use to access uh, a resource, server resource that is uh, the graph Microsoft. And uh, in terms, uh, basically this is like, it's like a web request. So we are sending a web request to the server and then in turn, a refresh token will be generated. Now this refresh token, we'll be using it to access the resource that we want, which is the graph. What you see here is what we call a client ID uh, because we're going to use PowerShell. So we'll be using the client ID. Uh, this is what we call the Microsoft first party uh, applications. So each Microsoft first party application has its own ID. Uh, you can talk about other PowerShell. You can also talk about Azure CLI. It also has its own unique ID. Even the Azure portal itself has its own unique uh, ID. These other information here, you see they are just is simulating a web browser. And then the URI that we're going, we'll be going to send this uh, request to is the auth uh, open authentication. Uh, and once we run this code or other script, uh, the response that we're going to get is a user code, device code, and also a verification URL. Now, a verification URL uh, will look like this which is a device login page. Now, once you run the script, uh, you you'll open, uh, you'll open this URL and then uh, you will uh, authenticate into the Azure AD using now your own credentials. And then after that, uh, you will return and run this other script which is basically more or less, basically look like the, the other one, but now we'll have to supply the device code that we had gotten from running the previous code uh, this year. So now you will feed in the device code in here, and then you'll also run this script, and uh, what you will get is something like this, which is what we call a bearer token. Uh, in here, it uh, outlined the scope and also the resource that we're going to access, which is a Microsoft Graph resource. And we also have a couple of access tokens, sorry, tokens. We have access token, we have refresh token, we also have ID token. But now the one which we go, we, we're going to use will be the refresh token. Uh, once you get the refresh token, now you'll be ready to fire up our Azure Hound and you will supply it uh, using the flag R. And then the other thing that you might want to supply in that uh, statement or other code is uh, the tenant ID, which I think I believe you all, all of you know how to get the tenant ID. If you open the Azure portal and then you go to Azure Active Directory. You'll see a window like this. In here, you'll be able to see the tenant ID of your Azure tenant, okay? So uh, once you supply it on the above command, the flag O uh, basically means the file that you're going to output all this data that you're going to get from running this command. Uh, there's a full documentation here if you want to know uh, more about the Azure Hound and also there are a couple of flags that you can supply in here to restrict the amount of data that you can get uh, from running that command. So once you run the command, uh, as we had earlier said that uh, the Azure Hound is just a tool for collecting the information from your tenant. And then now after getting this information, you now feed it uh, to the Bloodhound. Now this is how the Bloodhound GUI interface looks like. On the right hand side, uh, when you open the Bloodhound, you'll see a button whereby you can click and upload the file. 
that we had gotten from our previous command of Azure Hub, that is the output.json. Once you upload the file, uh, it will take a couple of minutes for it to upload, depending on the amount of data that is in your tenant. Now, uh, once it uploads, there's a button on the left-hand side that when you click this one here, you'll see now the a breakdown of all the information of your tenant. This includes all the objects that are in your tenant, such as the Azure applications, the Azure groups, uh, the roles that are present, and also the number of users. Now, this is a kind of information that uh, if you are to do a manual auditing process, it will have been very difficult for you to get uh, such kind of information. But now you see with these tools, it becomes very easy for you. So uh, you can decide to start your analysis of your environment uh, on a particular node. Uh, you can, for example, in our case, we are starting with the top of the global administrator, which is the most uh, role in Azure tenant. Uh, so if you start with the global administrator, once you, there's a search button here, you click and you enter the word global administrator, and this information will populate. It will show you all the information regarding the global administrator, uh, its ID, the tenant ID. And down here, we have a very important information, which basically shows the assignment. Now, this basically means the objects that are in your tenant that have been assigned this uh, global administrator role. And as you can see, in here we have three objects that have been assigned uh, this global administrator role. Now, if you click in that uh, active assignment area where it's indicated three, you will get a diagram like this. So as you can see, it shows the three objects that have been assigned the global administrator role. And uh, this icon, this one shows that this is a user account. Uh, the other two are what we call service uh, principles, okay? Uh, okay, from auditing point of view, uh, as a security engineer, you might uh, finish off your auditing process here because as you can see, maybe you identified these three objects and you can assure that they are the correct object that should be having these uh, roles. But then now, in while you're doing an uh, auditing process, you need to ask yourself also, who other, or rather, what other objects have access to these objects that have this role? Because uh, you might find that there are other objects that can have access to maybe this service principle or this other service principle. Also, this user account. And if that's the case, then it can open up a path of privilege escalation. Now, uh, the first user object that you're seeing here, this is the the original accounts that normally comes with the user who uh, bought the service, the Azure subscription. So by default, this account is given the global administrator role. The other two, like I said, are what we call service principle. In Azure, when you create an application in Azure AD, uh, there are two objects that are normally created. Now, there's a back background object that is normally called a uh, service principle, which is the one which is used to uh, act on behalf of the application. So any uh, anything that the application wants to do against the Azure tenant, it will use the service principle. Uh, these are the icons that you can use to know what exactly the other things represent in here. Uh, this one represents an Azure app. The one I was talking about is this one, which is service uh, principle. The rest you later on see on uh, Azure tenant. Now, uh, 
these tools, especially the Bloodhound, uh, comes into the rescue because now it becomes very easy to investigate and find out what exactly are the objects that are relation to these objects. Because when you're doing it manually, it becomes very difficult for you to find out. But with uh, Azure, this, no, sorry, with Bloodhound, this is where it shows its progress and how you can use these tools to map up the, what we call uh, the hidden and uh, unidentified uh, paths. So if you click on one of these, uh, and then you look on the right hand side, a panel will populate having uh, this type of information. We have outboard controls rights, and also we have inbound control rights. With outbound control rights, it basically means uh, the objects that are in your Azure tenant, that these uh, objects here have control, okay? While the inbound, these are the objects in the Azure tenant that can uh, control or rather can have control over these objects. We have explicit objects and then we have unroll object controllers and also we have transitive, transitive object controllers. Explicit objects controllers, these have direct control over these objects. While uh, unroll object controller, they represent the number of all the objects that uh, can have control on these objects. Transitive also, it, can, it uh, represent objects that can have control to, over these objects, but now through um, manipulating other things like privilege escalations. So uh, if you were to choose one of these objects, let's say the one that is down here, when you click on it, it will populate a beautiful graph like this. And from here, you can see all the other objects that this uh, object is linked to. This is the default directory of your tenant. This one is uh, the application. Now, this one is the surface principle. This one is the now the application. This application is being controlled, or rather run as this service principle. Whatever the application wants to authenticate into the Azure AD and access the resources that it has, uh, it has been given access to, it will do it using this um, service principle. Now, if you look down here, we have a user account by the name Jeffries Brown. Jeffrey Brown uh, has a role, what we call, can add a secret to this surface principle, okay? And also, we have another surface principle here, the Kratos, which basically means that it can reset Jeffrey's uh, Brown's account password. And this is the surface principle of this application by the name Kratos. If you look uh, on the top left hand side, we have another surface principle that has privilege role, uh, admin role for in this tenant, which is now the default tenant of Active Directory. This service principle belongs for this application. So from here already, you can get a general view of how uh, things might happen or rather someone can escalate privilege into your tenant because if someone can have access to Jeffrey's Brown's account and Jeffrey's Brown's can add secret to this service principle. And we already know that this service principle has uh, the global admin administrator role. So it means that even Jeffries Browns himself, he can escalate his privilege, privileges and um, give himself uh, the global admin role. Therefore, he can take a, a control of the whole tenant. So uh, we continue with the analysis of the data. Like we say, there are two objects that can have control to this IoT app application which is the Jeffrey and uh, the other one is uh, this application, which is the application representing this uh, service principle. 
So uh, the second object uh, is a user account by the name Jeffrey Pan. From the graph, we can see that this user has permission to add a uh, secret to the IoT apps. Basically, what we mean by secret is like a password that is used by this service uh, principal account to authenticate itself to the Azure AD whenever it wants to access resources. Okay. So there's one thing that uh, Microsoft uh, you should take note on. In According to Microsoft documentation, there's no limit to the number of secret keys uh, that a particular service principal can have if the application has been registered for a single or multiple tenant environment in Azure AD. This basically means that uh, we can add as many as uh, secret keys that we want for this particular uh, service principle and thereafter control the application. So, how is this possible? How is this possible that um, Jeffrey Brown can add a secret to this uh, service principle? Or rather, what roles does, does he have? Now, if you click on the node, uh, you will see this uh, another information that will populate indicating that uh, the role that this guy has. And as you can see here, he has uh, Azure AD admin roles in application administrator. Now with ad application administrator, you are able to control uh, all the applications. You can create applications, you can even uh, add the secret or even change the secret keys in that tenant. And this is why it is possible for Jeffries Brown to add the secret. Now, if we are looking into the proof of concept, we'll start off by uh, generating the Azure client secret so that um, we can log in using the new generated uh, client secret using the uh, service principle of the applications by the name IOTs. IoT operation, IT operations. So these are the commands that you're going to run. Uh, first of all, you need to authenticate using uh, Jeffrey's Brown's credential. Now, in this, we are assuming that maybe someone has been able to compromise Jeffrey's Brown's credentials, and uh, they authenticate themselves into the tenant. Uh, you'll be using this command: uh, Azure AD SP credential reset. And then you'll supply the ID of the service principal application. Uh, this flag append basically means that uh, normally if you run this uh, command without the flag append, it will reset the, or rather overwrite the, the password, the current password for this service principal. But then if you append this flag, it will uh, add, instead of overwriting the new password, it will add, uh, sorry, instead of over overwriting the current password, it will add a new password. So, uh, the service principle, where you can get the service principle of the service, I mean, where you can get the ID of the service principle, if you click on its node, uh, then you look on the left hand side pen you'll see the information that is generated there so you can grab it and then you come and supply it here now after we have reset the password we will have to authenticate to the azure uh, as the iot application service principal this is the command that you'll be really will be supplying you need to make sure that you have uh, supply the service principle flag the username is basically the what we call the uh, username service principle and then password is the one that we have generated and then the tenant id earlier on i showed you how to get the tenant id after we have uh authenticated ourselves as the IoT. Now the next thing will be uh, 
elevating our privileges to global admin. And since uh, the only person who can do that, give himself the global admin rights is a global admin and we have we already have those uh, rights so uh microsoft graph provide a rest api that allows you to access and manage many azure active directory objects and this can be done by sending post uh, put and get request to set of endpoints in this case we're dealing with the graph microsoft endpoint now we'll be using the command of Azure CLI, which is AZ REST. This command enables you to custom requests to customize requests to, to send custom requests to MS Graph API be made. Now the kind of the request that we are sending is uh, to elevate our privileges. The principal ID. This is the uh, script that you're going to run. This principal ID represent the principal, or rather the ID of the user object that you go, you want to elevate the privileges. The role definition is the the ID of the role that we want to assign to the user. In this case, is the global admin role. So this is the ID for the global admin. Directory scope is. Uh, the the scope we want the these uh, roles to operate which is basically the root scope as we have indicated there and then this uri is where we'll be sending this request which is the uh, graph management uh, graph management endpoint so this is basically what i've been talking about now, once you run that script, uh, and then you go to the Azure portal, and if you examine under the Jeffries Brown's account, under the assigned role, you will see that uh, he has been assigned the global administrator role. Now, uh, adding global admin to Azure subscription. Now with Azure, uh, it uses two different systems of uh, controlling access to the resources. We have what we call RBAC uh, roles, rather RBAC system, and then we have what we call Azure AD role system. With RBAC, it normally uses this to control resource access to resources such as uh, storage accounts and uh, virtual machines. While with Azure AD roles, uh, it uses it to control access to things like the users, objects, uh, the applications and stuff. Now you can be, you could be having a global admin role of Azure AD role, but you might not be able to control the resources, other resources in the Azure subscription, such as the virtual machine and the storage accounts. And also vice versa, you could be having the RBAC roles and still being unable to uh, control, or rather have access to some of the Azure AD resources. Now, this is why, uh, this explains why Jeffries Brown has the global admin uh, role, but is still unable to have access to the Azure subscription, as you can see here. So to do this, we'll need to elevate his uh, privileges. And uh, only a global uh, admin can be able to elevate uh, these privileges. So uh, like I said, Azure AD and Azure resources are secured independently from one another. This is through the use of the RBAC uh, system, the role-based access control system and the Azure AD roles system. Now, when you elevate your access, you'll be assigned the user access administrator role in Azure at the root scope. Remember, the only person who can do this is the, the one who has the Azure AD uh, global admin, sorry, global admin role. So uh, how are you going to do this? If you log into the Azure portal, you go to Azure Active Directory, and then you click on the properties. 
scroll down you will see somewhere where it is written as access management for azure resources now this is where you can toggle this button and you'll be assigned or that you'll assign yourself the user access administrator role now with this role you'll be able to have uh, control over the subscription resources and also the management groups as in, this include things like the Azure virtual machines. Now, if once you toggle uh, this access management of Azure resources, and then you you might wanna want to log in, I mean, log out and then log in again to the Azure portal. And you head over to the Azure subscription, access control, I, IAM under the current role assigned you'll see this new role that has been assigned to you now we are speaking in regards to Jeffrey's Brown account uh, so preventions uh, Microsoft has come up with new ways of in which you can prevent uh, these uh, kind of attacks. We have uh, Azure AD, signing logs, where you can perform audit and see uh, the users who have been assigned, maybe the global administrator role, uh, the users who have uh, access, or rather the service principal that have access to certain resources. And then also you can exercise what we call the least privilege principle. That is all users have the lowest access rights needed to do the job. For example, in this case, we are able to map out uh, the roles that have been given to Azure AD and we are able to identify that there are users who have been given roles that can be uh, abused. Then we have what we call also a user, I mean, Azure multi-factor authentication. For example, if the Jeffrey's brand account has MFA, uh, it will be difficult for an attacker to gain access to his account. Then we also have what we call a privilege identity management, whereby you can uh, control the access or rather the giving out roles of these privileged roles such as the global admin rights or administrator rights, and you can control and prevent such cases of privilege uh, escalation. But basically what we, we have seen here with these tools is that you can map out all your tenant environment and uh, be able to identify attack paths before uh, an adversary is able to do so and uh, take advantage of it. So, that will be all on my end. Awesome. Thanks very much. Um, thanks very much for that, Kevin. That was very inf informative. So, thanks very much for sharing that. So, there are some questions that, that are, have come in, like, in the chat window. So, I'll we'll yeah. just go ahead and just take, like, some of them. So, I mean, the first one coming from my end is sort of, like, so, What's the relationship between, so you've showed us like a two in terms of like the blood hound, Azure hound. What's the relationship between these two? Are they two separate tools? Are they the same two, but one relies on the other? What's sort of like mm -hmm. the relationship between these, these two tools? I would say uh, they are more or less the same tools, but one relies on the other. Like I said, Azure uh, Bloodhound is the one that is used to create the graphical uh, views okay yeah but with uh, azure hound it's like a tool that is used to extract information from uh, azure and then you feed in this information now to bloodhound i see so essentially like blog bloodhound uh, as the component for the front end ui why azure hound yes, yes, is yes, the yes, component yes. that we can use to collect or gather the data in the back end and then use that to yes. do that okay awesome so exactly. I'll let uh, Saibrahim read the, the second question. I think we have another question here. So let's just go to this. I'm not sure if Saibrahim can hear us. I think your mic is muted. Mm -hmm. I think your mic is muted. 
let's try to unmute. The little noise unmuted. behind me. So go ahead, uh, go ahead, David. Oh, okay. I can see you've got like the little ones there. Oh, okay, <laughs> you look so calm. For <laughs> you're used to this by now, right? You're used to like the noise. You're like, I'm so, I'm just calm. Okay. Anyways, I'll go ahead and read the, the next question to to Kevin. So the next question for, from Vladimir. So, are there any required permissions to run the tool? So I'm guessing also in terms of maybe collecting data, any minimum requirement in terms mm -hmm. of the permissions that that just needs to be taken into consideration. Yeah, like I said before, like you'll need uh, to authenticate yourself into the Azure uh, tenant for you to run the the Azure, uh, what is it called? The authentication flow mm. for you to, in order to get uh, what we call the refresh token. Yeah. Now the refresh token, you're going to feed it to the Azure Hound. Mm. Then Azure Hound will use this refresh token to access your tenant and gather the data. Got it. Got it. So, so, yeah. um, so, but in, uh, so, okay, I see. So, um, as long as you have a user account, so just even just reader permissions would be sufficient. If a user is just like yes, just yes. normal user permissions, that that will be sufficient to do that. Yes. Okay. So let's see, like um, the other question that's come in. So let's see. Oh, okay. The next one is this. Okay. Uh, there go ahead. CLI or shell script to extract the data prevention. Sorry, are there CLI PowerShell script to extract the data from prevention? Uh, I didn't get uh, your question. Yeah, so Krishna, can you rephrase the question a bit so that we can re-ask them to, to Kevin? Especially the last part, yeah. data from prevention. Yeah, so if you're able to rephrase that, that'll be really useful. So let me just quickly address that. So, um, because I think um, um, DR or doctor says, when I try to go to Kevin's blog, the page is not coming on the up. Apologies, I think I got like the wrong link. So, so I'll post oh. the right link to Kevin's blog in the chat window shortly. So, um, but why we wait for Krishna to clarify his, his um, question. So the, just comment from Byron. So <laughs> there's a world of information. Completely agree, sir. Completely agree. A lot of, a lot of information to go dig through and to sort of like uh, understand like what, what Kevin is talking about. So there's another question that came up, which was, are you going to be sharing the slide? I think that was asked much more earlier. So do you have the slides also oh. somewhere that maybe you're going to be sharing it? Or is it something that you you, you can't share at the moment? No, no, no I can share. Uh, I think uh, but at the end of this uh, presentation, I'll share the link with you. Then maybe you can post it. Awesome. awesome. So, okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that'll be okay. And, and then for others, so what I'll do is okay. I'll probably just post it like via the community channels. I'll probably also just include it in the description of the video. So if you check back okay. and see the description of the video, you probably see that information there. Yeah. So Ibrahim, I think Krishna has, has we asked the question. So do you want to pick that up again? Yeah. Um, are there any CLI PowerShell interfaces available for extraction or information? Uh, not sure I understand the last word. Links, maybe links. Logs. Are I there any logs. CLI power? Logs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can be logs. logs also. Oh, oh, now I think I understand it. Yeah. When it comes to uh, prevention, that is okay. I'm even thinking that Krishna's. So Krishna has, has, has. I'm thinking that Krishna meant. So the way we interact with Bloodhound is the way to mm -hmm. interact with it via CLI or PowerShell instead of going to the UI to see that is the way for us to interact with it just via PowerShell or CLI, I'm thinking. At least that's my interpretation. I'm not sure your interpretation of that question. So let me go with okay. what, what, what I know is that uh, the same information, you can extract it uh, using uh, the PowerShell and CLI. Like there are of also, I have a blog post uh, talking about this, how you can extract this kind of information, like finding out um, users in your tenant have let's say uh, certain privilege roles for example the global admin role or administrative uh, sorry application so there are certain commands that you can run to extract that kind of information and i think basically mm -hmm. this is what uh, is happening with uh, the azure hound i mean in the background 
maybe these are the science, some of the commands uh, that they are being run to extract that kind of information and then later on is being posted to bloodhound for graphical view yeah yeah and i think yeah. to also add to what you said i think krishna is asking saying okay so my customer doesn't allow for portal access so like some of the P poc in terms of mm -hmm. doing like some of these activities of resetting the passwords and doing some of these uh, mm -hmm. from what I, I i believe that all of this can also be achieved via the command line so in terms of even like the escalation of privilege from azure ad to azure resources all of those could be done via the command line yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The, i mean the the bloodhound is just to give you a graphical uh view of how the different uh objects in your uh, azure uh, tenant relates okay yeah so once you get that now you use the Azure CLI or rather the PowerShell now to perform the privilege escalations. Nice. That's okay. that's nice. So awesome. So I think if I'm if I'm correct, I think that's sort of like the last question. I think we sort of like covered all the questions, right? So yeah, I think of, it's, uh, it was the last one, yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of people just saying, you know, thanks very much, very informative presentation. So I agree. Thanks very much for for coming over to share this with us. And again, once you've you want to have like some very interesting blog over and you want to come around again to come share with us you know some other interesting <laughs> thing that you've tested out and sure. everything feel free to to, yeah, yeah. to let us know and then we can put something together yeah so, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for being very insightful yeah, yeah. i awesome. think uh there, there's an area that uh, i'm currently doing research on uh, the area to do with the azure first party applications for example like i showed here we can use uh, the PowerShell to mm. access certain resources such as the graphical MS graph resources. Now, uh, with this uh, first party application, they normally come in hand with uh, predetermined uh, controls, sorry, predetermined uh, scope and also pre authorized. In other words, they don't need to be authenticated for you to use them. Mm. Uh, so this is the area that I'll also like to encourage other researchers out there. Maybe there's a way in which you can use this to, since the fact that they do not they do not require authentication, you can use this to, you know, perform some kind of uh, attacks, especially in the Azure resources. Awesome. We'll look forward yeah. to that. We'll look forward to that. We'll probably have you back once you have some more information for us on that. We'll probably have you back. Thanks a lot for that. Thank you. So just to mention Thank to everyone you. before we call it a day today, so we do have another session that's coming up on the 18th of um, this uh, month. Um, and we'll have Kao. So Kao has spoken in, in our community group a few times before. And Kao, you know, is a VP of um, a, a research team at NetPy. So Carl and myself, we co-wrote the book Azure Pen Testing for Ethical Hackers together. So Carl will be speaking on the 18th, and uh, there was a recent vulnerability that the Net um, the NetSpy team disclosed to Microsoft for the Azure Function Hubs, and Carl will be speaking on how they found that and the disclosure and maybe how to protect ourselves against that. So make sure you again join the community meetup group so you'll be notified of these types of events. Any final word from you, Kevin? Any final word from you, Ibrahim, before we call it a day for today? uh just to thank you for everything yeah thanks thanks very much for coming also ibrahima yeah. any final words from you no thanks thanks for this session very insightful uh thanks for all participants and uh, have a nightly uh evening yeah thanks very much everyone see you next time have a lovely rest of the day morning afternoon evening wherever you're from so see you later bye for now